Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Probability Measure. And in here we're going to look at the approximation theorem. So here it is. It's let uh, omega, sigma of f, and lambda be a measure space, and let f be a field of subsets of omega. So this is the sigma field generated from this field f. Assume that lambda is sigma finite on f, and let epsilon be greater than zero be given. If A is any set in the sigma field and the measure of that set is finite, there is a set B in the field such that the symmetric difference is less than zero. So we're approximating A with B with precision less than epsilon. So now notice that it's dependent upon the measure that we're looking at too. And the symmetric difference can be thought of as this. It's, you know, A minus B plus the measure of B minus A. You can also think of it in terms of complement. The measure of A intersect B complement plus the measure of A complement intersect B. And so here's a proof. And we're going to use, uh, we're going to make reference to three videos. And that's uh, BV1, background video one, it's extension of a probability measure from a field to a slightly larger class of sets. BV2 is the extension of a probability measure to all sets of omega, and BV3 is an outer measure. So let's let G, and we're gonna we're gonna work in this video first. Let script G be a class of all countable unions of sets of F, the field. So let G be an element of script G, and let AN be increasing sets to G. That means that the uh, union, infinite union of these ANs equals G. Uh, so let, let the measure of G equal to the limit as N goes to infinity of the measure of these ANs. Now, yeah, I'll, I'll come back to this in a second. So we can assume that the ANs are disjoint because we can always redefine them. You know, AN is equal to AN complement intersect da, 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 to AN minus one complement intersect AN. That's not a plus. Now, since the measure of G is finite, then the measure of, of G is equal to the infinite sums of these measures of, of AK, right? They're all disjoint, so it's the sum. Now, there exists an n such that for all n, when we're greater than that n, that the sum of these probabilities is less than or equal to uh, epsilon over 2, right? This infinite sum converges, right? It's finite. And so um, these terms all go to zero. So at some point, we can pick an n that's way out in the tail such that if we add them all up, it's still just a small amount, say epsilon over 2. And let's let BN equal this union of, of AK from 1 to capital N. So note that BN is a subset of G, right? Because these are increasing sets to G. BN is an element of the field. Then the measure of G, the symmetric difference of G and BN, which is the measure of G minus BN plus the measure of BN minus G, well, this one here, G is that infinite union. So we can put that in for G. BN was, you know, of course, this union. Uh, the measure, BN is a subset of G, so when you subtract that off, you get the empty set, and this is zero. Now, the measure of, you know, if we take the, you know, K equals one to infinity and subtract off, you know, one to capital N, then we're really dealing with the measure of in that tail. So it's k equals n plus 1 to infinity of a k. But that's equal to the sum of these measures, right? Because these are all disjoint sets. But really, since you know each a k were in the field, so that's equal to p of a k. But we've by definition we've set that less than or equal to epsilon over 2. So the theorem holds for sets in script G. Now, one thing to remember, we, we have a measure in the sigma field generated by a field. 
right? So every set in this field is in here, right? And this lambda works on those sets in F, right? So here's the subtle point. So even though I call it P of A N, which is the measure of that set that belongs to the sigma field, that's really lambda, right? It, we're, it's lambda. So really I could call that lambda, and then that would be still lambda, you know, but so th the notation gets a little wonky, so I call it P, but really that's lambda. And then this is also lambda because we're dealing with the sigma field. But for this video, and then we're going to all, you know, join it back together to end. We're going to, so now step two, following BV2 and BV3, let's let A be any set in the sigma field. And then we want to define this measure, call it mu star. So it's the infimum of mu of G, where G is in script G, so, and then, and, and G is a cover of A. So A is a subset of G. And then for all G's with, that satisfy this, we want the smallest. And then that's the measure of, of mu star. Now, the way this is defined, we can get so close that in this cover that the measure of A is less than or equal to the measure of G. And that is by default but we, if we take the measure of, you know, mu star A plus, you know, epsilon over 2, some small amount, this measure is actually still bigger than mu A. With this, by this definition, we can satisfy that criteria. Now, let's look at the um, mu star of A minus Bn. Now, oh, so one, one thing here, so note that G A, you know, A is an arbitrary set in the sigma field. So if, if we represent it like this, now G is a cover, so it covers A. You know, it's always bigger than that. And then the sets B in in the in the field are increasing sets to G. So if you think of B in, you know, or you know, it's it's these sets. It's the A in. But then B was this the union from one to capital N. So those keep increasing to G. So these are you know subsets of G. These sets, B N, are subsets of G, but they may not coincide with A. There's some sort of overlap. But both of you know G sort of gets smaller and smaller until it's really close to A, and B N grows and grows and grows until it gets really close to G, right? And it's that, the G that is really close, that's the one we want. Okay, so that's a little picture of kind of what's going on. So now let's look at mu star A minus BN. And that is less than or equal to mu star G minus BN, right? Because G is greater, is a larger set than A. Now, G is this infinite sum. But this difference is actually, so we just take off the first capital N. It's the union... Of, of n plus 1 to infinity but all these are disjoint so that's the the infinite sum but we can call it p because each of these is a field you know part of the field and and we said by definition that's less than or equal to epsilon over 2 now let's look at this difference so mu star bn minus a is less than G minus A, right? Because G is, you know, BN is a subset of G, so this one's bigger. But since they're subsets, you know, G is a subset of, or A is a subset of G, this measure, this difference is here. But by definition, this difference, G, you know, mu star G minus mu star A, that difference is less than epsilon over 2. So hence the difference mu star, the symmetric difference of A and BN, which, which are these two measures here. And we just looked at them. Each of them are less than epsilon over 2, which is epsilon. So then it's, then it's satisfied. But note if that lambda is lambda star, right? 
and and note that lambda is equal to lambda star and equal to mu and equal to p while it's on the field and it's also equal to mu star and mu while it's on script g and so this mu star is lambda well and that proves the theorem so hope you enjoyed that i sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye